everyone, and welcome to another Monster Hunter World video. This is the Game Economist, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Lunastra Alpha Beta Armor Set. And the reason we want to take a look at this set now is because Lunastra happens to be the next monster that will be released for the PC. And back when she came out on the consoles, I wasn't doing armor reviews back then, so I thought this would be the perfect time to get this video done now. I think I've done enough armor reviews where I explain the method I use for grading the armor so that I'm just going to assume you've seen one of those past videos and know what I'm about to do. If you haven't, you can go back and watch them. For example, if you're curious about the Lunastra Gamma armor set, I do have a video up for that set already, which you can find on my channel. I'm going to be giving the Lunastra Alpha and Beta set the same resistance rating that I gave the Lunastra Gamma set, and that would be a B. This is because it does offer some useful fire resistance, but this is countered by an equal amount of weakness to ice damage, which may become an issue later on in the future. I mean, hopefully it does become a problem, right? Like, who do we have right now? We have Legiana, and that's about it. So uh, hopefully Capcom's adding some dangerous ice monsters. I'd also like to see some more dangerous dragon damage monsters, but we'll have to see, right? So for players on the PC, it will definitely be a while before they see a tough ice monster because you guys are already behind the consoles, okay? So right now, the in general, the resistance is pretty good just because you get that fire resistance. But again, we're gonna be fair. We're gonna give it a B just because we know it is weak also to ice. Before we start talking about the specific armor pieces, let's go ahead and talk about the set bonus skills on this armor set called Stamina Cap Up and Mind's Eye Slash Ballistics. Stamina Cap Up does exactly what the name suggests. It increases the amount of stamina you have. However, I found that this only activates after you eat a piece of food like a ration uh, when you're in the actual quest, right? You have to be in quest. It's a relevant skill for weapons that can benefit from having a larger stamina bar. This would include bows and dual blades. However, I also don't think it's a must-have skill for those weapons, and it's often the case that you won't get two pieces of the set onto an optimized build for those weapon classes. So you can see right off the bat, there's kind of some limitations. Like, what I'm trying to suggest is that players don't go out of their way to build for stamina cap up, and they especially don't go out of their way to build Mind's Eye Ballistic. So Mind's Eye Ballistics, uh, it's a skill that I don't use often because it's mostly just a utility skill that realistically you, you don't need it and it has a very high cost to activate when you're using the armor sets you know because you're gonna have to have four pieces of the set so similar to the Raftalo sets that have the same set bonus skill Mind's Eye Ballistic you won't be accessing it for an optimized build I mean you could add the decorations but if you're talking about the set bonus skill you're not gonna worry about it and now we can begin to grade the different pieces of the armor set. I'm going to jump between alpha and beta pieces uh, of the set based on how different they are from each other. If there's not much of a difference or there's really no reason to use one over the other, I'm probably not going to talk about it, right? There's no need to review it at that point. Starting with the Empress Crown Beta for the helmet slot. The Empress Crown Beta introduced the new, most efficient way to build Evade Extender on any build. The Alpha version looks better aesthetically, and it also offers a different build efficiency if you're trying to get Tool Specialist onto your setup. Note that since the Temporal Mantle is so powerful, this is not always a bad idea on some defensive builds for prolonged fights against something, for example, like the Behemoth, since that fight could drag on for a while depending on how skilled you and your team are. In general, though, I wouldn't mess around with the alpha version of the helmet. Most players will simply go for the Evade Extender on the beta version and take advantage of the two empty decoration slots, one which you could use to finish off the Evade Extender skill up to level 3. In terms of efficiency, this helmet outperforms the Dragon King eye patch, and so we are going to go ahead and drop it into the S tier because Evade Extender is a popular, relevant skill for both heavy bow guns and gun lances. Moving on to the Empress Male Beta, here's another slot where the Lunastra set changed the armor meta. Notice that it gives you two levels of peak performance and three small decoration slots. Not only is this very efficient, 
but peak performance is one of those damage skills that can be used on a whole bunch of diverse builds, and it's a high priority damage skill for speedrunners as well. For players on the console, you probably realize that it's in very close competition with the Dragon Set's uh, chest piece, since you're more likely going to give up the waist slot or the helmet slot uh, on whether you're trying to build Master's Touch. And this means after the Behemoth came out, that the Empress male beta fell out of the priority on a few builds, but it's still being used on non-Master's Touch speedrunner builds today, and especially when Lunaster first comes out on the PC, it's going to be a top tier choice for a lot of straight damage builds. The Empress male beta is going to be one of those rare pieces of armor going into the S plus tier. Okay, we've talked about the helmet and the chest pieces. Now we're going to take a look at the Empress Vambraces. There is a slight variation between the beta and the alpha versions. Notice on the beta version, you can focus on wide range, and you'll also pick up a large decoration slot and a medium decoration slot. This means the beta Vambraces are very efficient for a piece of armor in the arm slot, and then when we take a look at the alpha version, we see something just as impressive in terms of efficiency, a total of four default small decoration slots, if you want to think of it that way, with this being a solid option for building both the blast attack and wide range skills together. This is most meaningful for people who don't have enough blast attack decorations. With that being said, there aren't a lot of high tier blast weapons in the first place, and eventually you gain a much better blast attack option with the Azura Spurs Gamma, a set that also comes with the critical status set bonus skill. So I'm going to review this Vambrace based on what we already know is in the game, and say the Alpha Vambraces shouldn't be prioritized over the Azura Spurs unless, I don't know, maybe you're in some situation where you just can't give up the, you know, the leg slot. Going back to the Empress Vambraces beta, these are going to be a top pick for building the wide range skill. They're more efficient than the Wiggler Helmet, and they don't force you to take the health boost skill like the Empress Greaves Alpha. Now here's where we have to be careful when we think about build efficiency though, because if you wanted to build both wide range and the health boost skill onto your build, something that wouldn't surprise me at all if you wanted to do that, then you would actually go with the Empress Greaves Alpha in that case. You could say it comes down to preference. It's certainly going to be a better choice than the Kulv Tarath Wrath Leggings, in my opinion, and in all three cases, don't forget that all you have to do is build these two levels of wide range and then pair it with either the wide range charm or the new Lunastra Gamma helmet. And, and this will basically maximize the wide range skill. Let's give these Van Braces an S tier rating for being highly efficient in building a relevant and powerful defensive skill in the arm slot. All right, that was a lot for me to say about the Van Braces. Let's move on to talking about the Empress Coil Beta and Alpha. The Alpha has an efficiency variation as well, with it giving you an option for building some blast attack. In general, I'm guessing no one really bothers with this, but I suppose if you were going to choose the Beta Coil on your blast build, you might as well swap up to the Alpha version to get a tiny boost in efficiency, okay? So I thought I'd mention that. I was never a big fan of the Empress Coil Beta. I've seen it on many builds, mainly because it gives you two medium decoration slots in the waist armor slot. And currently there's only one piece of armor in the game that also does this, it's the Zora Spine Gamma, which I would argue is much more efficient because both the Bombardier and Critical Eye are more valuable to me than the Tool Specialist skill, except for, once again, those very rare cases where you're going to be in a prolonged defensive fight against something like Behemoth. So keep in mind also that the Zora Spine Gamma is giving us one level toward the critical status skill. Even though Empress Coil Beta is going to be relevant on the PC for a while, on consoles I'm only going to be giving it a B because I can't see myself taking it for anything anymore. Finally, we'll examine the Empress Greaves Beta, the leggings of the Lunastra Alpha Beta set. I already talked about how the Alpha version of the leggings may be your top choice for finishing off the wide range skill plus the health boost skill. And so here's one of the best cases where the alpha version and beta version deserve separate ratings because they function so differently from each other. The Empress Greaves Alpha deserves an S tier rating for both efficiency and usefulness for anyone wanting to build a multiplayer support character that uses the wide range skill. 
But jumping back over to the beta version of the leggings, you'll note that they come with two medium decoration slots and two levels of health boost. Very similar to the coil, except health boost is a higher priority skill for defensive builds in my opinion. Also, similar to the coil, I have mixed feelings about these leggings. I think they will be a popular choice for a while on the PC for players that need more empty medium decoration slots, but really the Empress Greaves beta, they have serious competition in the leg armor slot, right? Obviously there are the Dragon Greaves, but also the Azura Star-Lord guards needed for critical element, Zora Spurs Gamma for critical status, Kazer Greaves Gamma which give you a different Master's Touch option, Kirin Leg Guards Beta for free element, Dante's Boots Alpha for building weakness exploit, and the Death Stench Heal Beta for building handicraft. In other words, Empress Greaves Beta aren't going to realistically get chosen for their efficiency very often, and they force damage bills to bring a defensive skill, you know, health boost so they will almost never be taken by speedrunners anymore. That's why I think the leggings deserve a B tier rating. They're still going to be decent for anyone who really wanted to build health boost in the first place, but they face too many other good leg armor slot options at this point on the consoles. All right, and that completes the entire Lunastra Beta Alpha armor set. The total score came out to be an A+, with the some pieces in the set really redefining high quality builds, especially the Empress Male Beta, but also the Evade Extender skill and wide range, which you can find on the helmet, the van braces, and the leggings. Hopefully you guys found this useful. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my assessment. That's everything I have to say. I wanna thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.